Hello. In today's video, we're going to cover how to customize your own bearing peg. I'll start by opening up the file that I downloaded from the uh, Prusa or Thingiverse site. And this is the bearing peg. Uh, we're going to now access the settings file. So I want to view the combo and open up settings. And I'm going to close my start page because I don't want to tile it and then tile these two pages so we can see them together. So here's the bearing peg and here's all the settings for the bearing peg. I'm going to start by just making a change to the wall block depth, changing it from 6 to 8, and observing that it indeed uh, increased the size here. Uh, pressing Control Z puts it back to what it was. Um, the offset is the distance from the wall uh, here. I'll start by setting it to zero to demonstrate that you can see it actually removed it from the wall. Or I should say now the bearing would be sitting directly against the wall. Uh, so we'll put that back to one. And we're going to go to the retainer wall, which is this wall here, and change it to 3 to demonstrate. Now, you can see it increased it there. The camphor also increased, and if we had seen it, it was out of view, this is also increased. So that one actually took 3 millimeters for the 1 millimeter increase from the axle. So let's go back to 2, which is what it was originally set at. And there we have our original bearing again. Now let's talk about these items in yellow. The reason they're in yellow is because they started with an equal sign, re referencing other cells. This is a calculated value, and yes, it is adjustable, uh, so you can override it. In this case, maybe I want to only have three millimeters spacing right here uh, off the uh, counter, set, counter set, so I change the five to a three. And that's exactly what I see there. Uh, this one here, uh, the screw offset is down here. So when I make a change to it, to say move my screws up 10, for my, uh, it actually changes this value. So these are informational, uh, highly unlikely. You'll be changing the block width or the block height directly, but you can. Okay. Now let's look at the other things that get changed as we move along the line. The screws have a separation of 40. So if I had an existing wall peg that I was replacing with a uh, screw separation of 70, I type that in and the mount is automatically adjusted. Um, if I decided that I uh, wanted a different size screw, right now I have it set for uh, 4 millimeters in diameter, and say I wanted to go to 3.2, I could change this to a 1.6 radius on the screw radius, and that would make a slightly smaller screw. Um, I found that 2.0 works real well, so I'm going to leave it there. The 4.5 uh, countersink radius refers to the size of the outlet there, and the countersink depth is the depth inside the, uh, between the outside plate and the uh, screw hole. The offset, we just covered that, uh, raises the offset, which is normally at the center. It raises up however many you want. Uh, that gives you more of a triangular type pressure against the wall. Uh, does make sense, but there's not a lot of pressure probably from a filament spool anyway, so you can pretty much set that to where you want. but. This is be a little bit stronger mount than one that uh, doesn't have the offset. At least that would be my guess. Uh, go back to the uh, 40. As far as separation, I would say 35 is pushing it because you're actually starting to cut at the edge here, but it has not actually cut into the uh, compartment, so it probably would work. I chose 40 just to be safe and also to get it away from the campers. As far as the uh, radius, we, we covered that. Uh, the width, 
So if we wanted to make this a, uh, this is talking about the peg now, we wanted to make this a smaller peg, we could go 24, and it shrinks it up. Uh, wouldn't really want to do that though, because as you can see, now this is awful thin. Um, probably a way to adjust that too, but I'm just demonstrating different settings, so no reason to fi fight with it. Okay, we're back to 28, and uh, base width, that's the bottom of this base here, right at this point here. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, there we are. So if I say I want to make that, say, 12, it extends it out all, all the way down for you, nothing else changes. The spool width is where we place the bearing here, the back bearing. So if I were to change that to 60, it will move it back. If I were to change it to 130, it will move it off completely, making it a single uh, bearing on the end. Cannot really remove the end bearing. I kind of made that permanent. You'd have to go in and change it with a one-off. But if we went back to, say, 75, which is my favorite, the top height is where, how high this comes up right now. It comes up a little bit over the center of the axle. You might want to change that. Uh, the center of the axle would be at zero. You might want to go up a little higher to lock it in better for some reason. Also, it changes the uh, overall height here. You cannot exceed twice the radius. So if I went 14, that's going to be the absolute maximum I can go. If I were to go 15, you'll see that uh, now we're starting to see some trim off the top. So uh, again, like I said, get back to where we were. Okay, and we have the radius here. This refers to the radius of the axle, which is cut out of here. The fact I'm using an 8 millimeter in diameter radius uh, for my axle, but the bearing holes uh, are at 14 millimeter diameter, so 7 radius is why I cut the hole this size. It gives clearance for the axle, uh, works really well. The length is 120. I added a couple of extra millimeters just for, uh, so that it doesn't rub against any plastic. Here we have the actual size of the bearings. The bearing themselves measured 11, so I made it 11.2 because I found that 11, uh, they did not slide in and out easily. Um, the same on the 7.2 width. It does affect this size also, so if you are having, for some reason, you know, th your bearings weren't holding in well enough, then you could tighten that up. But I think 7.2 or even uh, 7.4 and 11.4 might work just fine. Um, but uh, those are tolerances that you can adjust. And if you wanted to make, say, a 100 millimeter version of this and eliminate that second spool or move it back, we'll, we'll eliminate it for this, this time around. That basically does it for you right there. There's your there's your, your design. One other unique way of doing things would be to eliminate your hole separation, and that gets you down to a single hole back here. Now, once you've done that, you have eliminated the block uh, uh, the wall block plate, and so now you've got to make up for that difference here. So if we come up over to our settings and we say that our offset, our block depth is 6, simply make that 6 and we're back where we were with our countersink. And so that is how you make a single hole version of the mount. If you want to make a single hole version that goes above it, you would simply have to add the value to the width, no height, excuse me. So, you go to the offset, okay, wait a minute, where's my settings? Here it is, and we say we're going to want to go up, say, 15, just as an idea to see what we got, and there we have ourselves the version of a one peg with the mount on the top.
and you could calculate exactly how far you want to go based on the fact that you've got the 11.2 bearing radius and then this is a <coughs> uh, 4.5 so that would be 15, 16 you can do the math and figure out where to put it or you can just key in a number and go, go from there actually I believe it should be 16.5 if you wanted to be exact but uh, that's how you create yourself a peg exactly like you'd like to see once you're done it's as simple as highlighting it doing a file export and exporting it and then you're ready to print it hope this helps hope that uh, you enjoy working with a fully parameterized version uh, this just blows my mind that I can do this and uh, I appreciate your comments